Hey everyone, so bear with any potential continuity errors in this video as this was pretty much shot as spare time projects over the last few weeks from the last update but I have finally got the tooling plate done for the Sherline. Got all the helicoil inserts inserted. Uh, really all I've got to do is just drill through a couple of holes and countersink them so I call it done at this point. So let's recap where we've been. First, I came up with the idea to build the thing in the first place. And then while I was down in Southern California for visiting family and friends, I was able to get this plate machined over at the Simi Valley Adult Education Center. My old machine shop teacher over there was nice enough to throw it on a machine for me and get that done. Huge shout out to you. And then pretty much it sat for a while while I waited to find a helicoil insertion tool. So shout out to High Tech Machining on Instagram for loaning me this little guy. It is absolutely amazing. And then it sat some time longer because I didn't have time to retap the holes deep enough. So the other week, my machine shop instructor over at City College of San Francisco invited me over to come on over, throw some tools on the ground, scare everybody, all that good stuff. And I was also able to get the holes retapped to the right depth. So in short, the reason why the holes were not tapped to the right depth to begin with is because I did not have a bottoming tap which would drive the spirals of material out. It forced them ahead. So being I didn't want to blow up a tap in the part and I didn't want to drill the holes all the way through on the tooling plate, for those two reasons, I did not tap it to the full depth that I know it could have. I figured, you know what, I can just come along, retap it by hand. It was a slightly less efficient, but a lot more, let's just say, cautionary way of doing it. And sometimes being a little bit cautious is a lot better than snapping a tap on the part and wrecking a lot of work. Especially if you're just making a one-off of an item for yourself. It might be more work, but I like to say it's a lot more work to redo it. So now that I have the holes all retapped, I was finally able to get all the inserts inserted. So I'm going to cut to pretty much like a montage time lapse of all the stuff that took place to get to this point. And then I'll come back and share some tips and tricks on this. And that'll be the episode this week. So I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming time lapse -y craziness of lights falling over and not having good shots. So enjoy. Oh, and sorry if the lighting in the garage for this isn't the best. I've got a crappy little desk light doing the work for me, but you know what? It's better than nothing. Okay, so all the inserts have been inserted into the tooling plate, which is awesome. Now, a couple of notes to keep in mind when you are doing this. One is it's a good idea to keep one of these helicoil removal tools around. This one was claimed to pull out metric sizes, really. It's just a T-handle with a triangular shaped piece of metal that you just jam into the insert and you can twist it out. It will damage the insert doing that, but odds are if you have to remove the insert, it's damaged anyways. Um, obviously having an insertion tool like this guy, which is on loan from High Tech Machining, is amazing. I've heard of people inserting them without a tool and I believe it can be done, but it's kind of one of those cases of if you can use the right tool for the job, use the right tool for the job. Now a couple of notes on this when I was inserting them into the plate. One, my light kept falling on over because I kept rocking the rickety little work table thingy I'm on. So sorry about that. That was pretty annoying. Um, I also put some super lube grease in all the holes. As I figured, even though these are dry film, which is a Teflon-based material, 
um, inserts. I figured being that the tooling plate is not anodized, it would not be a bad idea to have a grease barrier between the inserts and the tooling plate. It also made them fit in there a little bit easier. I'm not too worried about them pulling out though as they're in there tight. As these are tight locking inserts. And the reality is if it does loosen up, oh well, it's not the end of the world. Merely this tooling plate is just to allow me to switch pallets in and out quickly and I'm not going to be cranking down really hard. I mean, they're quarter by 20 holes anyways. I mean, screws. So that is the update on this. Once I get my milling machine in the corner going, I'll update you guys more on this. Uh, sorry, this episode was kind of short. Kind of worked out that way this week, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time on Make It With Calvin. And please work safely. We don't need any more tragedies in the community. See you guys later.